Welcome to the University of Washington Point of Care Ultrasound Series module on Ultrasound Guided Vascular Access. Vascular access can be difficult when relying on surface anatomy, and ultrasound guidance may facilitate rapid and successful vascular access even in the most difficult scenarios. Indications for using ultrasound to obtain IV access certainly include patients in whom several prior attempts without ultrasound have failed. However, certain patient populations may be good candidates for first attempts at IV access using ultrasound to avoid delays and patient discomfort. Examples are patients with a history of difficult IV access, whether it is due to injection drug abuse, prior cannulation, scarring, and small vessels in pediatric patients, or in the case of volume depletion. The three focused questions for your initial ultrasound exam are, where is the target vein? And, once you find the target vein, is it patent, and is the course of the vein straight enough to insert a catheter? While ultrasound can be used to guide venous access in any vein, there are a few established veins that are often accessed using ultrasound guidance. The cephalic vein has no associated artery and is therefore an ideal vessel. The deep brachial veins run on the medial upper arm in the supine position and do have an associated artery and nerve bundle, but these are easily avoided once identified using ultrasound. The linear or high frequency probe should be used for venous access to have a high resolution image of superficial structures. A tegaderm or op site may be applied to the probe surface to keep the procedure clean, and sterile gel may be used on the outside of the probe. This is considered a clean, but not completely sterile procedure. Before starting your ultrasound exam, take note of the probe marker and the corresponding dot or screen marker. Tapping on the side of the probe near the marker can help confirm if you are not sure which side the marker is located on. The marker on the probe and the dot on the screen should be kept on the same side of the operator's line of sight at all times. Be sure to set up your ultrasound machine and patient's arm in your line of sight at all times so that you don't need to turn your head to see between the patient's arm, your catheter, and the screen. Keep the probe marker turned towards the same side as the dot on the screen. In this example, both the screen marker and the probe marker are towards the patient's right side. Some providers prefer a seated position. When performing any procedure, it is important to be comfortable. To find the target vein, first put up a tourniquet, and then start scanning in the antecubital fossa and scan into the forearm. Then scan up the medial arm to find the deeper brachial and cephalic veins. A peripheral IV placed with ultrasound guidance can often be obtained in the antecubital fossa and below, and does not always have to be in the deep brachial veins. Confirm your vessel of interest is indeed a vein by noting a thin-walled, hypoechoic structure with no pulsatility. And then, confirm the vein is patent by compressing the vein using pressure applied with the probe. If the vein is compressible, then it is patent. If you are unsure if the target vein is patent, or if it is a vein at all, you may press the color button and move the box over the vessel of interest and look for color flow inside the structure to confirm that the vessel has flow. Remember, red and blue simply mean towards or away from the probe respectively and do not signify an artery or a vein. Use the ultrasound to check the position of your target vein in relation to nearby structures such as arteries or nerves. Ideally, you will choose a vein that has a clear pathway from skin to the vessel surface, which is not near an artery or a nerve bundle. Occasionally, clinicians fail to pass a catheter in a vein because despite getting a flash of blood, the vessel is too tortuous to allow passage of the plastic catheter. To avoid this, once you find the vessel of interest, scan up or proximally along the limb to ensure that the vein stays in the center of the screen and thus has a straight course for a few centimeters. After you've identified the target vessel and confirmed patency, optimize your image using depth and gain adjustment. Use the gain button or dial to adjust the gain such that the blood inside the vessel appears completely anechoic or black and the surrounding tissue is gray. Use the centimeter markers on the right side of the screen to determine the depth of your vein of interest. Confirm that between the skin surface and the vein, no important structures such as nerves or arteries exist in your planned path of needle puncture. 
Use the depth button to adjust the depth such that the vessel of interest is in the lower portion of the screen. And then use the calipers on the side of the screen to check how deep your vessel of interest is. Depending on the depth of your vessel, use an appropriate length catheter of the desired caliber. For vessels one centimeter or greater in depth, we strongly recommend use of a longer than standard catheter to avoid the catheter falling out. Now you are ready for puncture. First, clean the skin using chlorhexidine. Do not use alcohol as this will degrade the probe surface. Have all your equipment nearby. Some patients may require a small dose of local anesthesia prior to puncture. For the transverse approach, align the needle very close to the probe surface at a 45 degree angle, with the needle tip directly abutting the center of the probe. Some probes have markers to denote the probe center line. However, you may just have to estimate this. Align the needle at a 45 degree angle in the center of the probe with the vessel in the center of the screen. Make sure not to touch the needle tip to the probe. If you are concerned you are not able to see the needle tip, you may simply angle the probe slightly toward the needle to see the tip as it enters the skin without risking touching the needle to the probe and contaminating it. The needle tip appears as a hyperechoic bright white dot that you will need to follow closely as you insert. Because the needle tip may appear exactly the same as an ultrasound cross-section cut of any portion of the needle, it is important to continue to move your probe proximally and follow the needle tip as it approaches the vessel. If you lose your needle tip, remove the needle almost to the surface and start again. Never advance the needle if you cannot visualize the tip of the needle on the ultrasound screen. To use the long axis approach, find the vessel in short axis and twist the probe 90 degrees. Once you are able to see the vessel in a long axis view, approach the center of the probe surface with the needle at 45 degrees. When using the long axis approach, it will be possible to see your needle tip and needle shaft at all times and watch the approach to the vessel of interest. Gently fan your probe side to side if you lose visualization of your needle tip, needle shaft, or the vessel at any time. Again, do not advance the needle if you do not see the entire needle tip and the vessel in the same picture. Once you are close to the vein, stop looking at the ultrasound screen and turn your attention to the catheter. Advance very slowly and look for a flash of blood in the catheter reservoir. Once the flash of blood appears, proceed as usual for venous catheter insertion. Some practitioners prefer a two-person technique to insert an ultrasound-guided catheter. In this approach, the ultrasound operator looks at the screen and holds the probe, and uses verbal cues to direct the catheter operator who is looking only at the catheter and patient. Choose a comfortable position for the patient and the providers. Avoid accidental cannulation of an artery by confirming the vessel of interest is not pulsatile and compresses easily. Avoid cannulation of a tortuous vessel by following the vein's course prior to puncture. And avoid cannulation of a thrombosed vein by ensuring the vein is easily compressible before puncture. In summary, consider ultrasound guidance for peripheral venous access in patients with difficult IV access. Consider using the transverse or long axis approach. Ensure patency and straight course of the vessel before puncture. Follow your needle tip at all times. And enjoy increased success and patient satisfaction by using ultrasound guidance. We would like to thank the ISIS Center and Justin Andros for the creation of this training video.